Today we'll cover the first Lemminkainen cycle in the Kalevala. This includes runos 1 through 15, and uh, the first one is a bond made, uh, then a bond broken, the demon's elk, elk, horse and swan, and resurrection. Quite exciting stuff that is gonna happen. Our protagonist in the Lemminkainen cycle is obviously Lemminkainen. The name probably comes from the Finnish word Lembi, which is love. And he is sometimes referred to as the lover boy because he is a womanizer. He's also referred to as Ahti, which would be like his first name and Lemminkainen would be the surname. Ahti uh, Lemmikäinen. Farmind, his mother sometimes calls him, him Farmind. Um, island boy, that's how it's, uh, the, uh, the Lemmikäinen cycle, cycle opens, giving these uh, many different names which, uh, which kind of categorize uh, him. Uh, quite obviously, of course, where he comes from, uh, for a mind, uh, meaning that he has this mind to go uh, away, <laughs> to far uh, away places, uh, probably. So his, his mind is always wanting to go somewhere far away. He is very restless, uh, a restless character, and... Uh, and uh, and as I already said, he's a womanizer. I posted on Blackboard a film uh, clip from, from, a, from a movie called Iron Age, uh, a Finnish movie, but it doesn't, you know, the, the, the fact that it doesn't have English subtitles does, doesn't matter. Uh, you get the atmosphere of the island where uh, Lemmikainen goes to uh, Woo these, woo these women and uh, finds his wife. So Ahti Lemminkäinen uh, is introduced in the beginning of uh, the first uh, runo in um, runo 11 here and uh, he, uh, he, he goes, uh, he, uh, is, he is introduced, he wants to uh, leave his home and, uh, and uh, go to this island where there are a lot of women there. So, uh, so he is uh, interested in going there. So it's time to tell of Ahti and to lilt about a rogue. Ahti the islander boy, he the wanton lover boy grew up in a lofty home with his dear mother at the broadest uh, base far end underneath far headlands arm. And, um, and uh, there, there he grows up. We have an other mother-son uh, combination here where the mother tries to give him advice, but he does not listen. We also introduced on that first page, page 120, to Gullikki or Gulli. So the clipped form, just Gulli, Gullikki or Gulli. You notice that this, this KKI is very often an ending. Uh, of names, but sometimes the, the clipped forms are used. So Kylli was an island maid, an island maid, island flower, who grew in a lofty home, came up in a most graceful uh, sitting in her father's, uh, came up in one most graceful sitting in her father's rooms where the back bench sagged. So, uh, so everybody wants to marry. Uh, Kulikki because she's so beautiful and comes from a very wealthy background. The son wound her for her for his son uh, his sons, but she'd not go to Sunland. The moon wooed her for his son. A star wooed her for his son. Uh, from Estonia, bridegrooms uh, came. Others from Ingria yonder. These are places there on the Baltic. See far up north, uh, close to uh, where the Kalevala places are, um, uh, are established to, to have been. So uh, from these these uh, uh, the foreign countries, 
people came to, uh, oh, bridegrooms came to woo Kyllikki, but he said no to everybody. No will I go to Ingria, to its banks and braes. There is lack, lack of all things, lack of trees and lack of splints, lack of water, lack of wheat, and lack of rye bread. So, uh, this is what uh, the wanton Lemminkainen wants because uh, this girl is hard to get. And his mother doesn't want him to go. His mother tried to forbid. The old woman warned, do not go, my boy, among your betters. You will not be accepted among the island great kin, island's great kin. kin. And uh, Lemminkainen says, I don't care if I, if I come. And this is something that is repeated very often. What did Lemminkainen care? He couldn't care less. He just, uh, he just uh, did what he wanted to do and um, went ahead with his plans. So Wanton Lemminkainen, page 120, Wanton Lemminkainen said, Fair far mind uttered, though my home is not handsome and my kin not great, I will choose with my body, take with my other good looks. So he's handsome, he is really interested in, in the opposite sex. And still his mother forbids, Lemminkainen, to go. don't go, there, will, there the wenches will taunt you, the women will laugh at you. And if you watch this little film, you can see how Lemminkainen is in his boat and he's going, he's getting closer to this island and there are all these beautiful girls and women uh, standing on the beach strand and waiting uh, interesting, in, interested in seeing Lemminkainen to come there, and they they kind of giggle, and then they pull him, pull him to the island, and that's when the fun begins for Lemminkainen. So Lemminkainen's mother knows that uh, Lemminkainen is a bad boy. He's a womanizer, and um, and yet he he doesn't listen to his mother. Um, remember how Jokahainen did not listen to his mother when his mother gave him, gave him advice. We have met one uh, man who listens to his mother, who is the air maiden, and that's Dynamoinen who listens to his mother, his already dead mother, and, um, and goes to try to get the woman um, from the north to be his wife. So Lemminkainen decides to leave, no matter, no matter what mom says. He takes a good stallion, he harnessed the choice foal, and he rumbles off to the island's famed village, off to woo the island, flower the island's especial bride. So, um, so uh, he, uh, he comes, uh, comes to the island and uh, he twists his black whiskers and, and is kind of ready, ready to start looking around. Um, and uh, the mother has, uh, has uh, warned about, you know, the uh, women perhaps laughing at him because he doesn't come from great wealth. And uh, the house is not, the house is kind of humble where he comes from. He's, he's very self-confident. So, um, so he says, I haven't heard a woman laughing at me, not, nor suffered a wench's taunts. And, um, and he uh, goes there, starts, uh, starts uh, wooing the women. So he, uh, he, he needs to have a reason to stay, like an ostensible reason to stay there and get some work at the island and he asks if, uh, if there is some work for him. He got hired as a herdsman. Uh, this is not this a humble position, but he, he took that job uh, so that he could stay there, you know, among the women. And he got hired as a herdsman, spent, spent the days herding, the nights making merry with lassies, sporting with those maids, capering with braided heads. Thus wanton Lemminkainen, he the fair farmind, 
warded off woman's laughter and held off a wench's taunts. There was no daughter, not even the purest wench he did not touch up, did not lie down with. So Lemminkainen sleeps with all the women. And if you look at this interesting interpretation in this short film clip about Lemminkainen uh, that I posted uh, when he goes to the island, um, when he leaves, he has to he has to leave the, in, the, because the men come there and, and the men are angry. But that's not really it's not totally faithful to the text of the Kalevala. But among all those women that, uh, that uh, Lemminkainen sleeps with, and he sleeps with all of them, there is one he doesn't sleep with, one last there was of them all among the island's great kin, who would not accept bridegrooms to uh, take to good husbands, and that was Gullikki. That was Gullikki the Proud, the island's beautiful flower. So, um, so, what? How does how is Lemmikan gonna get her? Because she's not, she she is not, you know, she's playing hard to catch, and we don't know if she's even interested in him, and uh, and he steals her. So this is on page one hundred and twenty-five. Um, and the full, uh, full bloody rogue came, wanton Lemmikan and drove with his own stallion, with his chosen foal, into the midst of their sport of the beauties, beauties capers, snatched Gullikki into his sledge, sledge, grabbed the maid into his sleigh, dumped her on his hide, put her on his planks, and he whipped the horse, thrashed it with the thong, then he glided off saying as he goes, lassies, don't ever give the game away that I have been here, have taken a maid from here. So Lemminkainen tells, tells Gullikki's friends not to tell anyone. Um, so he actually threatens them. Um, I'll sing your bridegrooms to war, your young men beneath the sword, so they'll be heard never more, nor seen ever in this world, walking in the lanes, driving in the blaze. And um, so he, he threatens them. If you know, if you tell anyone that I've taken good, uh, I will I will sing bad things to happen. Remember, in the Kalevala, things are done by singing. So, what does Gullikki think about this? Of course, she is uh, not happy with having been having having been just snatched. Truly, Gullikki complained. The island's flower moaned. Let me go. Give a child her freedom to go home back to her weeping mother. And uh, she cries and cries. And uh, Lemminkainen is just no. I'll no. We'll be fine. And um, and they are approaching uh, Lemminkainen's home, and uh, and uh, Lemminkainen, there's this kind of like mysterious little thing. Gullikki is very unhappy, and Lemminkainen says, "It it doesn't matter, you know. You don't don't cry about the the wealth that you left behind. Like for instance, um, instance uh, the the cows that you uh, your your father had, don't worry at all, I have many cows, many milk givers, one buttercup on the swamp, two strawberry on the hill, three cowberry on, on burned land, they are fine without eating, fair without looking after, there's no, no uh, evening tethering and no morning letting out, no tossing of a hay bale, no worry for salt or feed. So uh, these are cow's names, buttercup and strawberry and cowberry, but he, but he is referring to flowers on the, on the field. So I've got plenty of flowers on the field, um, which he kind of like jokingly calls um, calls uh, cows. And uh, the um, hapless maid sighs and she puts this into words. Oh, dear lover boy, if you want a maid like me for an everlasting mate, 
for a hand under your arm. You swear an oath forever that you will not go to war, not even for need of gold, even for greed of silver. Remember when we were reading the uh, the Icelandic sagas, how the, the Vikings went went warring in order to get gold and silver and, and just, you know, steal, rob these things, and this is evidently what Lemminkainen has also been doing, he has been going to the wars a lot and to, you know, to get these things, but uh, anyway, uh, Kyllikki promises, this is the bond, Kyllikki promises that, okay, I will, I will be okay, and um, if you promise not to go to war, if you are actually going to stay there and take care of me, we'll see that that won't happen. So uh, Lemminkainen says, I swear an oath forever that I shall not go to war, not even for need of gold, even for greed of silver. Now you swear, he says to Gullik, you swear, swear, uh, swear your oath that you will not go visiting, not for greed of a good, good hop, even for need of a dance. So Gullikki is not supposed to go visiting her friends and Lemminkainen is not supposed supposed to go to war. And, and it's obvious that this bond is not going to be kept. Um, uh, Kulik is shown when they start approaching the house, um, Lemminkainen's home. Uh, Kulik is in a little bit of a snob, like, you know, what is that? What is What kind of a house is that? And it seems doesn't seem like a you know fancy house like where I come from, and um, Lemmingannon promises that they will be a bigger one. <laughs> but so they get there to Lemmingannon's home and meet the mother-in-law, Lemmingannon's mother, and um, and and the mother is extremely happy that his wayward son has seems to have settled down and brings this beautiful woman from a very good background uh, from the island and, uh, and marries him and they, they stay there with, uh, with the mother and the mother says you need to build, a, build a, a whole cabin that's better thresholds before the cabin and new doors at the threshold since you have got a young maid and have looked out a fair one better than yourself greater than your kin. So Lemminkainen's mother is happy. But we know that this is not gonna, gonna last forever because um, for a long time Ahti Lemminkainen, Ahti Lemminkainen is not going to war, uh, but um, he goes fishing. Uh, in, uh, runo number 12 and page 132. So one morning among others, one morrow among many, he, Ahti Lemminkainen, goes off to catch fish, spawning. Did not come home at evening, for the first night could not. Now, Kyllikki went visiting to sport with those maids. So Kyllikki is like, okay, you, 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 you broke your uh, promise. Actually, Ahti had not gone, Ahti Lemming and had not gone to war, but he went fishing and why does he stay overnight? Um, Gulliki probably has, he has her own suspicions and decides to go and uh, see her friends. So, um, Lemming and Ahti has a sister whose name is Anniki. It's a side character. But um, she's a tattletale, and she goes and tells uh, Ahti Lemminkainen that uh, Gylki has left the house and gone. Gylki had gone visiting with her friends. So, um, darling Ahti, my brother, Gylki has been visiting with foreign gates, sporting with the village mage, capering with brave head heads. And uh, Ahti is very, very upset and um, 
and uh, decides that now that the bond is broken, <laughs> that uh, Gullik has gone visiting even though he only went fishing. <laughs> so um, he is going to go to war. I could go to war to the fires of the North Suns, the grounds of Lapland's children. Gullik has been visiting within foreign gates, sporting with those maids, capering with braided heads. And Gullik is, uh, of course, by now, um, probably in love with her husband, even though she left reluctantly with him. And, uh, and he says, my darling Ahti, don't go off to war. I dreamed as I lay, as I soundly slept. Fire as a forge was driving, flame was flickering. So she has had this bad dream that uh, something bad will happen if Ahti goes uh, to war. But he wants to go and he uh, tells his mom to bring the war gear. Uh, bring here my war gear, carry here my battle dress. I have a good mind to go drink the beer of war, to taste the honey of war. And the mother says, we've got beer here, you can drink beer at home, home, home brew. And, um, and he's just like, I don't care for home beer. I, I'd sooner drink river water or Terry Paddle's blade. That's sweeter for me to drink than all the home brews. So bring me my war gear and I'll go to, I'm off to northern, Northland uh, cabins, the grounds of Lapland's children, to lay claim to gold, to demand silver. So just like the Vikings, right? So, um, and mom says, oh, there's gold at home and silver in our shed. So, um, so Wanted Lemming Cannon says, I don't care about home wealth. If I get one mark from war, I'll regard it as better than all the home gold, uh, silver lifted by a plow. Bring here my war gear, carry here my battle dress. I'm off to a Northland war, a fight with Lapland's children. This is north from where they live. Um, where low he lives, remember? I have a good mind take into my head to hear with my ears and see with these eyes of mine if there's a maid in Northland, a wench in Darkland. It's called Darkland because it's dark uh, throughout the winter. In the summer, it's light throughout the winter. But uh, anyway, it's referred to as Darkland sometimes as well. Uh, who will not accept bridegrooms take to good husband, husbands. So what a jerk uh, Lemmy Cannon is. He's got a wife and he wants to go in and see if there's a maid in Northland. Of course he knows that there are because they were famous girls. So Lemmy Cannon's mother says, Oh, Ahti, my boy, you have Gullik at home. Uh, a home wife who's loftier. It's grim to have two wives in one husband's bed. Well, of course. So uh, he doesn't care. Kulik is a gadabout. Let her run in every sport, lie in every room, making merry with village lassies, capering with braided heads. So he's keeping Kulik like a prisoner there in the farm. Doesn't want him to go and see her. Uh, doesn't want her to go see her friends but uh, goes to get another woman from the north. And uh, that's what he, he does. So, uh, so he leaves and he travels to the north. He gets there and through an interesting, interesting spell, uh, he is able to get to the yard of the northern farm without the dogs barking <laughs> and uh, th there's a there's a party going on um, and there's, there's there's magic also in how lemming cannon then gets inside um, inside uh, inside the house there 
in in Pohjola in the Northland farm, and uh, there's this little man in the mist. This is on page 142. So reaching the yard, he smites the earth with his whip. A mist rose from the whip's path. A little man in the mist. It was he took all the breast straps. It was he to let down the shafts. So uh, this little man, because Lemminkään is like, uh, who's going to come and help help me with the horse <laughs> and uh, um, uh, do the horse's uh, gear? And uh, this little man appears and, and serves, serves him. And uh, then he is able to do a little bit of a shape-shifting on page 143, then wanton can and dared to become someone else, he made bold to change his shape. From the corner he went in, got inside from the wall, joined, and he put this into words. A song is good when it ends, when it is short a tale is, is fair, it makes better sense to stay than break off in the middle. And here's the mistress of the Northland, and uh, and uh, she she says there used to be a dog here, a cur, iron hued, that ate the flesh, gnawed the bones, lapped the blood of someone new. What kind of a man may you be? What sort of fellow are you coming into this cabin, getting inside the building without the dog barking? hearing you or the barker noticing. So it was uh, it was not a like, oh, so nice to have you here. Uh, she is like, what kind of a man are you who gets into our uh, into you know our, our house without anyone noticing? And um Lemmingen is uh, he now became a soothsayer, someone who tells the truth. He turned into a singer. This like, I find, I mean, if we have these men who are, they kind of like burst into singing and they do things with the songs. So page 144, then wanton Lemmingan and he, the fair for mind, now became a soothsayer and turned into a singer. His coat hems struck fire and his eyes poured flame as Lemmingan and sang, as he sang and chanted. Um, he sang the best of singers into the worst of singers, Rammled, rammed uh, rocks sideways in the mouth, piled boulders sidelong in those of the best singers, the most skillful bards. So he sang such men, one this way, one that, into barren glades, upon unplowed lands, into fishless pool, pools, once quite uh, without, uh, once quite without perch, into Rutia's a steep rapid. Uh, Finnmark is the place that they are referring to. It's way up there in, in uh, beyond Lapland. So uh, he sings the men, he sings the people in the North Farm away and shows his power uh, by his singing. But there's one man that he left unsung, a paltry herdsman, an old man, old and sightless. His name was Trip Cap, uh, whatever that means, uh, like a wet cap, um, and so he turns out to be detrimental to Lemming in, in, in a while. So, uh, le so he leaves this one person, this old blind man um, there and doesn't sing him out of the out of the house. And he asks, uh, Dripcap asks, Oh you want a lover boy, you've sung the young, sung the old, sung the middle aged, so why will you not sing me? And then let me get in. He is a soothsayer, he tells the truth. This is why I'll not touch you. 
You are mean to look upon red cheek without my touching. Still a younger man, a paltry herdsman. You spoiled her your mother bore. You raped your sister. So he knows, Lemminkainen knows that there is this dark uh, background. Uh, all the horses you abused and the mare's foals you wore out on open swamps amid lands upon shifting water scum. So he's not worth uh, Väinämöinen's singing him out of the house. He accuses him, blames him, uh, this old blind man. Who gets angry and he goes through the door to the field across the yard, ran to Tuonela's river, the holy stream's whirlpool. There he looked out for far mind. He waits for Lemminkainen on his return from Northland on his journey home. So, um, so he disappears, but he goes to this magic place, Tuonela, Tuonela's river, and uh, this is the river between the land of the Death, Tuonela, and the land of the living. So that's the black river between those two two places, and that's where he waits for him. The next uh, runo is the demon's elk, uh, because after Lemminkainen has been this obnoxious person who just appears there, comes there, and then sings everybody out of the house, um, he has the nerve to go to the mistress of the Northland who had asked, who are you? And now Lemminkainen has shown who he is, and he goes to uh, Lohi, um, the mistress of the North Forum and calls her a hag. Hag, now give me your wenches. Bring one of your girls this way. The best of the flock for me, the tallest of your wench brood. And first, uh, Lohi has the natural reaction. I mean, what a jerk uh, you are. And he says, I'll not give, give of my wenches, bestow any of my girls, not the best, not the worst, not the tallest, not the shortest, for you have a wedded wife, a married mistress. So lo, he sees right through Lemminkainen and tells him, you already have a, have a wife, you have Kyllikki. This is a reasonable reply, of course. But uh, what Lemminkainen says is, I'll tie Gullikki outside to the village threshold steps or to foreign gates, and from here I will get a better wife. So he is really mad at Gullikki for having gone to those quote unquote foreign gates to just see her own friends. So, the, so what's going to happen now is uh, Lemminkainen insists he wants a wife. And uh, what does the mistress of the Northland say uh, or do? Uh, doesn't want to give her daughters to, to him. And he starts making these, okay, you'll get one if you do this, and if you do this, and if you do this. So the first task is to get the demon's elk. And uh, this is going to be uh, runo number 13. It's about how Lemminkainen says, okay, I'll go and get the demon's elk. And, um, and uh, he starts, uh, starts looking for the elk, travels a uh, long ways and boasts on the way that he's going to be getting, getting the, the demon's elk. And uh, then on page 150, the demons happen to hear the Judases to take note, and the demons build, build an elk, the Judases a reindeer. Then you know we are referring to two, two different animals, but you get an idea. <laughs> elk, reindeer, either one. 
They made a head from a block, antlers from goat willow forks, feet from driftwood, left, uh, legs from stakes in the swamp, a back from tennis poles, sinews from withered grasses, eyes out of pond lily buds, ears out of pond lily flowers. So we have these made up animals. Remember Vainamonen's horse who was that was made out of straw and hay, and here we have the demons who are uh, over here, uh, lemming and wanting to get this elk, and they build this demon's elk. And, and it's winter time now, and uh, lemming starts skiing. He, he gets these skis and poles and, and, and skis and tries to find the demon's elk, he skis and he skis, but he can't find the demon's elk. He covers a lot of ground but can't uh, find it. He runs into people in Lapland and there's this horrible noise because the elk has, has run uh, through the little gathering uh, in, the, in the village and has toppled the soup, the, the food uh, kettle, and, uh, and people are like, you know, crying and groaning and laughing, making a lot of noise there. And he goes there and he boasts to these people uh, on page 152 at the bottom, what men there be in Lapland and shall carry off the elk, and what women in Lapland all shall wash a pan, and what children in Lapland all shall gather a wood, and what pans a lap, a lap may have, all shall cook the elk. So he boasts that he's going to be, he's going to get the get the elk, uh, and the elk will be cooked and eaten. <laughs> so he actually does get the elk and uh, is able to put him in a little little pen. And uh, then his lemming guy, he is like, okay, I got the elk now. All I have to do is haul the elk back, take, take the elk back to the Northland farm and show that show Loki that here's, here's the elk you asked me to bring and now give me your daughter. Uh, but he starts thinking about women already now. So, uh, stay there, demon's elk, wild reindeer, trot there. And he strokes it ba its back and he pats its hide. This is just the place for me, just the right place to lie down beside a young maid with a growing hand. So she starts thinking about women and 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 obviously about how of the reindeers or the elks, elks pelt, uh, there is this like you know blanket made where he can lie with the with the woman. The, then the demon's elk, the wild reindeer, kicked out in alarm, uh, alarm and, and it uttered, "May the devil help you to lie down with young maids, dally with daughters," and it escapes. So what we have here at the end of the demon's elk, Bruno, is that Lemminkainen is left without the elk. And not only that, but his skis are all broken down. You, you, you can't uh, really move fast in the snow without, uh, without skis. So he's, he's, he's got trouble with his skis and, uh, and he ends this uh, uh, his, he contemplates about his deal before he decides what to do next and he says never never more may another may another of our men go hunting rashly skiing for the demon's elk as I luckless went I have destroyed good snowshoes and a fair pole I have lost and the sharpest of my spears so he's, he's, he's peeved with the situation, doesn't have the elk, he can't ask for the woman, and his skis are broke. But he goes back. Um, no, he, what, he, what he starts doing is, uh, is he, uh, he considers, he's, he's like, never, I'm not going to do this, but uh, it doesn't take long for him to change his mind, and he's going to persist, and he starts, what he starts doing is he starts chanting. Again, he starts using the power of words, <clears throat> but he's also talking to the gods, the pagan gods. So he says, 
old, uh, old, old man chief, chief god. The chief god is Pukko. Uh, Pukko, the chief, ka, chief god, and he talks to him and he does this, these hunters' chants. Uh, the beginning part of of uh, Runo 14 is Lem Lemminkainen doing the hunters' uh, chants. He also talks to Tapio, who is another pagan uh, Finnish god. Tapio, the god of the forest. So Ukko is the chief god, like Warren, and Tapio is the forest god, who has power over who lives in the forest, like the elk, for instance. And he talks to Tapio's, uh, Tapio's family, entire family, prays for these pagan gods. He talks to Tapio's wife, whose name is Mieliki. And, uh, and his son is Nyrikki, and his daughters are Tellervo and Tulikki. So uh, he talks to the entire cluster of gods and goes to the forest god Stapios' house and sees them there, continues to ask help from them and promises, um, you know, like offerings, gold and so on. He, he continues uh, his, his chants for several pages and then on page 161 it seems that they start to work. So once in Lemminkäinen, and long skied on his way, sent tails at a thicket top, sent three in a wild hall, he pleased the forest mistress, Tapio's wife, uh, even the forest master, Tapio, delighted all the lassies and got round Tapio's uh, mates. They chased, they hounded the demon's elk from its lair behind Tapio's slope, the forest god's slope, the bounds of the demon's stronghold in front of the men seeking for the reciter to catch. So they help these gods, forest gods, this entire family, they help Lemminkainen to uh, catch the elk. So he wanted Lemminkainen left fly his lasso at the demon's elk, demon's elk's shoulders, the camel colt's neck's neck, so that it did not kick wickedly as he stroked his back, his back, its back. Then wanted Lemminkainen put this into words. Lord of the woods, landmaster, fair one living on the heath, Mielikki, forest mistress, Dear generous forest crone, come now, take the gold, pick out the silver, put your linen on the ground. So he promises uh, uh, offerings to the gods for helping him. And then he sets out for Northland, tells uh, Logi, the mistress, I've skied for the demon's elk from the demon's fur furthest fields, had Give me your girl, give me the young bride. So, Lohi uh, could say, okay, you brought me what, you, what I asked you to bring, but this is not how it works. Uh, one task is not enough. And Lohi, mistress of Northland, this one answered that, I'll give you my daughter and the young bride when you've bridled the great gelding, the demon's bay horse the demon's foal, whose jaw froths from the demon's furthest turfs. So another condition for Lemminkainen, uh, go and get the demon's horse. You brought the elk, but now go and get, get the horse. This turns out to be a monstrous horse, and again Lemminkainen prays. He's like, old, old, old man, chief god, old man, keeper of the clouds, governor of the vapors, open heaven up and sky, all into windows, rain into hail, rain iron hailstones, drop icy coolers on the mane of the good horse, on the demon's blaze brow wax. So he's asking for, for a hailstorm basically to hit the horse so that he can catch it. And he talks very nicely to the horse, and that seems to be, you know, one of his 
one of his, uh, he, can, he can talk nicely to women, he talks nicely to animal, animals. He manages to bridle the horse and he manages to take it uh, to the Northland. And he came to the Northland's cabins. Um, he went indoors, page 165. He went indoors from the yard, said when uh, he got there, when he reached Northland, I've bridled the greatest geld in the demon's fall, I've har harnessed from a green acre a holy field's edge, and skied for the demon's elk uh, from the demon's furthest fields. So now, hag, give me your girl, give me your br bride. Uh, but there's no two without a third one. So Lohi is asking for a third task to be done by Lemminkäinen. And uh, this turns out to be the, you know, uh, fateful task. I'll only give you, give my daughter and the young bride, when you have shot the swan from the river, from the stream, the splendid flow. So and this is the Tuonela River. This is the river of the death, uh, between the death, uh, death land and uh, the living land. When you have shot the swan from the river, from the stream, the splendid fall, out of Tuoni, Tuoni's black river, from the holy stream's whirlpool, at a single try, raising a single arrow. And Lemminkainen is just like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll get you the, uh, the swan from the Tuoni river. So he goes to the river, but now, uh, remember, Dripcap has been waiting there all the time, and Dripcap, the herdsman, whom he had angered by telling truth, truths about his nasty past. Uh, the old man from Northland is waiting there. He is at Tuonelas River at the Holy Streams Whirlpool, page 166, looking turning around for Lemminkainen's coming. And one day then Lemminkainen comes, okay? And what Dripcap does, he raises a water snake, a serpent out of the waves, and hurled it through the man's heart, through Lemminkainen's liver, through his left armpit, into his right shoulder blade. So this old man who is very angry with Lemminkainen throws the snake at him and this is the end of Lemminkainen, almost the end of Lemminkainen, but there's another Lemminkainen cycle coming up so something must happen Then we'll see what that is. So now Lemminkainen has been hidden by this snake and he is dying. Now wanton Lemminkainen felt a grievous pain. He uttered a word, spoke, that, spoke thus. Now he remembers his mother, whom he had disobeyed, uh, turns to talk to his uh, mother. That was the worst thing I did, not remembering to ask my mother, her, her who bore me, for two words by all accounts, three would have been quite a lot, how to be, which way to live in these evil days. I don't know the herds of water snakes, the bites of serpents. Oh, my mother who bore me, pains taker who cared for me, if you knew, if you guessed where your luckless son is, of course you would come dashing, you would hasten to help me. And um, now Dripcap uh, hurls Lemminkainen, who is hurt by this uh, snake already, uh, he throws him to the Black Tuoni River uh, in the worst whirlpool. And one with Lemming Cannon went, went down the rapid roaring with the current in a flash towards Tuonela's cabins. That bloody son of Tuoni struck at the man with his sword, bashed him with his brand, with one flashing stroke smote the man. Uh, into eight pieces, tossed him into Tuonelas, uh, into five pits, into eight pieces, tossed him into Tuonelas River, into the dead land's eddies. Lo, therefore, ever with your crossbow, your arrows, 
shoot the swans of the river on the river, the waterfall on the banks. That was Lemminkainen's end. The untiring suitor's death down in Tuomis Black River in the Dale of the Dead Land. But we have the mother who is dedicated to his son no matter how wanton, how how wayward, how unreliable, how uh, horrible he is. And this is the mother's uh, mother's worry and mother's love. So mother is worrying about lemming getting at home and um, then all of a sudden, remember they had this brush with that lemming getting been brushing his hair and then said, um, this brush will bleed if I'm in trouble. <laughs> and Kyllikki, who is, you know, the abandoned wife, uh, Kyllikki is there, the handsome wife, uh, notices that blood was leaking from the comb, gore was oozing from the brush. Kyllikki, the handsome wife, uttered a word and spoke thus, No, my man has gone from me. My fair foremind has vanished on travels without shelter and on unknown roads. Blood is leaking from the comb. Gore is oozing from the brush. Lemminkainen's mother looks at the brush and, yep, that's, that's what's going on. Lemminkainen is, is in danger or dead. And he, uh, she, Lemminkainen's mother, uh, she doesn't have a name, so she starts, she goes to uh, the Northland. She knows that Lemmikainen had, had gone to the Northland because he wanted to, you know, wage war and get a, get a woman from there. And uh, so she goes there, Lemmikainen's mother, and says, Lo, he mistress of Northland, um, uh, where have you led Lemmikainen? Where have you dispatched my son? Lo, he says first, I know nothing of your son, where he has gone and vanished. I sat him in a stallion's sledge and, um, and uh, doesn't, doesn't want to tell first. And uh, yet um, Lemming and his mother kind of, you know, just say, sure, you have lied. And um, tell the truth. Um, Tell, uh, tell the truth, will care and have done with lies. Where you let Lemminkään and lost the Kalevalan man, or else it will be your doom, you will meet your death. So Lemminkään's mother is uh, threatening um, her. And um, the mistress of North, Lohi, uh, says this Suppose now I tell the truth. I set him to uh, ski for an elk. Play the king of beasts, brittle great geldings, and to harness folds. I made him search for the swan, hunt the holy fowl, fowl. Now I cannot imagine what has come by way of ruin, by way of hindrance turned up, that he's not heard coming to ask for a bride, to beg for a girl. So Lohi has started to think, what is going on? Because Lemming Cannon is this go getter that I'm going to get the elk, get the horse, get the swan. He hasn't brought the swan. So the mother figures out that, okay, this is, he's is still uh, on his trip, trying to get the swan of the Tuonela River. So the mother asks the trees, uh, aspens, and she asks the road, where is Lemminkäinen? an oh, small road, God's creature. Have you not seen my son, my apple of gold, my staff of silver? And uh, I have worries of my own without worrying about your son, says the road back. So we've, we have the speaking trees again. We've had them before. We have now a speaking road. We have had speaking animals and and uh, then Lemminkainen's mother asks the moon, Darling moon, God's creature, have you not seen my son, my apple of gold, my staff of silver? Uh, the moon says, I have worries of my own without worrying about your son. 
For I was formed for hardship, was put here for evil days, to travel the nights alone, to shine in the front, to keep watch over winters, to vanish for summers. And uh, so, doesn't tell, uh, doesn't know. Then um, Lemminkainen's mother asks from the son, um, O oh son, creature of God, have you not seen my son, my apple of gold, my staff of silver? We get this repetition throughout uh, the Kalevala. It's just part of the part of the style. So the sun knew something. The daylight reckoned. Your son, luckless you, has been lost, been killed down in Tuonis Black River, the dead land, ageless water. Very often we have parts of like you know there are three tasks that a person needs to do. Uh, three uh, various things they ask something from three roads, three houses, <laughs> and so on. Sometimes it's four. And this is interesting because in, um, in Native American fairy tales or, or tales or, or legends, you often have instead of three, you have four. So in this, in this Finnish, uh, in the Finnish Kalevala, in these runos, you, you, you sometimes find three, but sometimes four. In this case, it's the fourth one who knows, and that's the sun. And so the sun tells where, uh, where um, Lemminkainen is. And that's Lemminkainen's mother bursts into tears, and, and she knows that she will need a rake in, <laughs> rake in order to get her son's pieces from the river of Tuonela, uh, because that's, that's where, um, where he is, dead in pieces. And, uh, and so she goes to Smith Ilmarin, and we've met him before. He's, he's, uh, he's the uh, forger of the Sampo. So, and that story will continue. So, Smith Ilmarin, and you forged once, forged yesterday, so forged today too, held a copper rake, prong it with prongs of iron, for, uh, forged prongs a hundred fathoms long, long prepare a health of five. So, uh, so um, Smith Ilmarin um, uh, builds this. Um, a uh, copper rake uh, pronged with prongs of iron. She, Lemminkainen's mother, gets the iron rake, flew to Tuonela's, Tuonela's river. She prays to the sun, O oh sun, God's creature, creature of the creator, our light, shine for one moment sultry, for the next dimly swelter, for the third with all your might, Put the weary folk to sleep, tire the force of the dead land, wear down the host of dawn. So she has to make the um, the the people in Tuoni, uh, their son had actually cut Lemgaden into pieces, so they need to be sleeping while she's working to get his uh, his uh, her, son, her son from the river. On page 174, she rakes for her son along Tuonela's river. She dredges against the stream. Uh, she dragged once and for what for that twice. All she gets of her son is a shirt. Much to her distress, she dragged once again, uh, raking there. Um, got his stockings. Had she found the stockings to the great grief? Had to her dismay. From there she stepped even further down to the dale of the dead land, dragged once along the water, next time across the water, a third athwart uh, the water, and it was the third time that a mass of entrails came forth on the iron rake. This is kind of gross, but that's what a mom has to do if she loves her, her son, as Lemminkainen's mother does. So mass of entrails it was not, but wanton Lemminkainen, and he, the fair formite, stuck on the rake's prongs by his ring finger and by his left toe. 
what does the mother do now? She starts putting the son together. And the mother thinks, and weeping, and weeping, she says, could a man still come from this, a new fellow recover? This is why it's called resurrection, because she's able to put him together. So she prays again the power of words. Um, she, she first prays, a sweet woman of the sinews, sinew daughter, sweet woman, Come and, uh, come and put these sinews together. Uh, second prayer, uh, come last of the air made from heaven's pole, roll the bolt down the sinews, shake it down the limbs, uh, roll through gaps in bone, bone and um, through cracks in limb, limbs. And uh, the third prayer is to the old man, to Ukko, the main god, uh, on page 178, should not enough come of that, you yourself, God of the sky, harness up the foes, make ready your steeds, drive with your bright sleigh through bone and through limb, through muscles and through slippery sinews, jo join bone up to flesh, sinew up to sinew, and, uh, and so on. So... Um, so uh, the mother made the man, formed the fellow with the life he had before, with the looks he used to have. She had the sinews all told, the sinew ends bound, but had not the man talking, nor the child speaking. So she needs an ointment. Remember how how Wainamönen's knee needed the ointment after the bleeding had stopped by the, the origins of iron words. But now what we need is uh, another ointment. And remember how the bee was helping there, and the bee comes to help now as well. And I posted this... Um, this, uh, this heavy metal song called Bee, by amorphous uh, on on your uh, uh, under under the folder the Kalevala, um, it's about uh, Lemminkainen's recovery with the help of bee. So O oh, bee, bird of ours, kind of forest flowers, king of forest flowers, go now to fetch some honey and to find some mead out of pleasant forest land from careful Tapiola. From many flowers, petals, from the husks of many grasses, to the ointments for the sick and to heal the ill. So she takes the ointments and uh, she's able to able to um, put. Uh, she has already put lemon together, but now she anoints him with those ointments asks Thor uh, Duri, uh, the Norse god of thunder, um, whom we have, you know, read about before, and, uh, and uh, B, uh, with the help of B and all these prayers, uh, Lemmikainen starts talking again. So we have a weird combination here. What is what is not weird for from the Kalevala point of view is that we have always, you know, when there's a problem, the nature is involved. You have the pagan gods involved, and with the help of the nature and the prayer, the the, the uh, and the you know words, you uh, get these things done. So uh, she says on. Um, page 183, rise up out of sleep, get up out of dream, from these evil places, from the bed of hard luck, and Lemminkainen awakes, and, um, and tells him how all this, all this happened, and, um, and the mother says, let's go home. Uh, then Lemminkainen's mother lulled the one she knew to the shape he had before, to the looks he used to have, till he was a bit better, even fitter than before. Then she asked her son whether he was short of anything. 
Wanted Lemminkäinen and says, there's a lot I'm still short of. Um, there's my, there my heart's desire, there my longing lies among those maids of the north, those fair braided heads, the mold-eared dame of the north. Slowly, will not give her girl until I shoot the kalu, the, the hit the swan on the Tuonela River on the holy streams. Whirlpool. What a fool! Uh, he has just died. His mother has resurrected him. And the first thing, pretty much, he says, Do you need anything, my son? And he says, Oh, I need that woman from the north. And Lemminkainen's mother now puts her foot down and she says, Leave your blasted swamps. Let the Kaloos be up on Tuonis Black River, the smoking whirlpools. You just come home now with your mean mother and still thank your good, your luck, your God known to all for giving you real help and bringing you back to life from Tuonis unbounded, undoubted roads, road, the adobe uh, of the dead land. I could do nothing, nothing myself without the mercy of God, the guidance of the true Lord. So this is, this sounds like Lundrup adding, adding this here, uh, this reference to Christianity. But, uh, but basically the mother, mother now tells him that we need to go home now. And uh, Lemminkainen is kind of like, okay, mom. Uh, then one time Lemminkainen went home straight away with his dear mother beside his honored, honored parent. There, there, now, there now I lose my far mind, leave wanton Lemminkainen, these are the goodbye words for a little while, out of my tail for some time, and I turn my tail. Meanwhile, I let the song go elsewhere. I'll push on to a new track, and the new track will be the second Vainamönen cycle. But that's going to be later, after our test. Okay, thank you.